Let's bring in Eric Ham. He's a political analyst and former congressional staffer. He's also author of the GOP Civil War inside the battle for the soul of the Republican Party. And he's joining us live from Washington, D.C. Thank you for your time tonight, Mr. Ham. So protests across the country in an election year. Do you think that they can have an impact on the presidential campaign, let alone the election? Or is it too far out for that? Oh, absolutely not. In fact, we've already begun to see the impacts that these protests, these demonstrations, but more importantly, the backlash that many people are feeling about President Biden's handling of this conflict. We've already begun to see the impact that they are, in fact, having on elections across the country. In fact, if you go back to the primaries in Michigan, Wisconsin, or even Pennsylvania, there have been sizable numbers of voters who have been voting uncommitted to protest and to showcase their disdain for the administration's handling of the war. And now what we're seeing is just an escalation of that disdain that's now playing out across the nation on America's colleges and universities. Yeah, it's really important. Uh, Michigan, I think you said Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, right? Because they are three of those six key swing states in America. One of the factors we know that can affect an incumbent president's chances of re-election is social unrest. How worried will the Biden administration be, especially given the role of those swing states, you know, Michigan with its very large Arab American population? Yeah, that's right. In fact, we know that Michigan is a state that the Biden administration won in 2020 by less than 1% of the vote. So we know that Clearly, any any the outcome of the race for the White House is going to go through a state like Michigan. And when you look at these protests and demonstrations, there is no sign of these of these demonstrators actually dissipating in their approach or their intensity. And so this is something that the administration just hasn't been able to get right. And again, we've already seen the impact that it's had on elections, particularly in the primaries. Now we're seeing because there are no more primaries for voters to express their uncomfort, their unhappiness with the Biden administration. Now we're seeing that they're marching in the streets, they're marching on their campuses. The question now is, will they actually take these demonstrations to the Democratic National Convention that will play out in Chicago? And of course, can we also begin to see these demonstrations continue in the fall, which would be devastating for the Biden administration. And I think it's important to note that what we're seeing right now is these are college voters. Yeah. These are college students. And this is this next to African-Americans. They are the background of the Democratic base. President Biden needs college voters. He needs those young voters to come out in droves to support his candidacy. And right now, what we're seeing here is not only is the president not actually doing more or doing enough to address their concerns and their needs, but what we're seeing here is an administration and a campaign yeah. that seems to be completely adrift of how to address or connect with their concerns as this continues to play out. But young voters don't tend to come out in their droves, do they? Voter participation, you know, among those under 30, it has increased over the past few elections, but it still lags behind the older age groups. Is, is Biden counting on that? That might be true. But when we're talking about an election that all expect to actually come down to a razor thin margin, every little bit matters and every little bit counts. And what you have to understand is if you take a state like Michigan, we saw more than 100,000 uncommitted voters in that, that election. The driver of that of, of those uncommitted votes were actually a college students, particularly in areas like Lansing, Michigan, where you have Michigan State University, Ann Arbor, Michigan, where you have the University of Michigan. And so it is yeah. those areas where students are not actually showing support. But what, and again, if we're talking about a razor thin election, they need every vote that they can get. But what options do those young voters, you know, to all of those people who oppose this administration's foreign policy on Israel, what options do they have when it comes to the presidential election? Because they're not going to give their vote to Donald Trump, are they? 
They have two options. In the state of Michigan, we now know that Robert Kennedy Jr. is actually on the ballot in that state. Now, right now, polling data shows that he is actually pulling support from Donald Trump, not from Joe Biden. But again, when you're looking at an election where you have two equally unpopular candidates, the last thing you want heading into the election is for disaffected voters to look at their 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 options and decide that someone who has the name that speaks of royalty in the Democratic base, you don't want voters going to someone like that. And so right now, that's an option for voters yeah. in the state of Michigan. And also, we just learned he's now also on the ballot in California. Yeah, and I think Michigan is going to be crucial yeah, absolutely. It will be, of course, like it has been in the past two elections. Really interesting what you said that, uh, you know, that 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 uh, Robert Kennedy is actually taking votes away from Donald Trump. I mean, from from President from Donald Trump. Um, Eric Ham, I'm afraid we'll run out of time, but thank you so much for your analysis on this. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.